really lovely to have these two high level players in here. And Pika Penguin has a lot of good choices here. I think the choices up top quite nice as well. The Rhino, Arclight, Phoenix can be nice. Speed with Collar and Steel Ball can be really fun as well. And yeah, kind of going for a classic though. Mustang, Crawler, Supply. Super clear, super clean. I would like to see the Heavy Metal here. Um, Ariel could be cool as well though. Don't think the Marksman with Marksman with Sledgehammer is the combo you want to go for. As I said, that, that's exactly what Pika Pinguina is going for. Cast a curse, that one. Um, <laughs> okay. Grand Finals is on though. Best of three, baby. Let's see how this goes. Tangniel coming up with my crawlers and Mustangs here. Let's see what the next thing, the next investment here will be. Pika Penguin bringing in Sledgehammer, bringing in Arc Lights. Okay, so a lot of good targets there for these two marksmen that Tangdale just brought up onto the battlefield. And yeah, I would expect uh, Tangdale to win here, but we, we want to have. Let's cheer for Pika Penguin there. Let's gamble a bit in game as well. Let's see a good couple of marksmen here being set up. As we have crawlers moving in here and yeah both sides did invest their units uh, did buy the first couple of units here on the battlefield uh, for the first round yeah we have the snipers we have the little crawlers here coming up for time deal in this grand final mustangs on the flanks deal a bit of damage what's over here we have a good come of set chambers we have the arc lights that are pretty good at crowd control and then this marksman here in the rear in the first finals of an SDL Mecha Bellum tournament, with the best auto battler out there on the market. Round one starting in 10 seconds. Let's see who will get the W in this one. Not sure who hasn't pressed ready. Okay, there we go. Four marksmen here moving in. The question is will these crawlers be killed off quickly enough uh, before these marksmen on the other side did deal their damage? They will need two shots, I believe, for the yeah arc lights. Uh, arc lights, otherwise fantastic against mustangs, they're fantastic against crawlers, but they take a bit too long here, I believe, as all the marksmen here already getting murdered, and the sledgehammers on them own won't do it. So yeah, first round here will go for Tangdeal most likely. As I say that though, ah, it's actually quite close. It actually is really close. Um. Ooh. One more shot out of this sledgehammer. One more shot out of this sledgehammer. Okay, yeah, it will actually be pick up Pegamo in here. But it doesn't really matter. First round doesn't deal much damage. Uh, damage gets dealt by the amount of units surviving. And obviously, you don't even have that many units to start with on the battlefield at the beginning. And then even less of those are usually surviving. So damage here minimal. Pick up Pegamoin still behind in hit points. Based on the starting combo. And yeah, tongue deal here with the 50 extra income. As the better longevity ability compared to the early level marksman here so that time they lost the first round was kind of supposed to be expected uh, question is how it will go in the mid run as Kapinguin still has to choose Arclight level up got reduced here between each round the players choose out of four abilities to improve their comp uh, composition they get the same abilities there to choose from uh, yeah we get shield specialist here we get Arclight XP ratio on the side of Pika Pinguin, meaning that the Arc Lights will level 75% faster now. And then you can level them up. And each level increases their stats by the base stats. So the level 1 to level 2 is a clear doubling of their stats. And they get their level 1 stats added once more when you move them up to level 3. So leveling up can make them quite powerful. It just doesn't add up to the damage they deal at the end to the enemy. Which is, I believe, one of the ma ma main reasons why people don't level up as much on the higher levels. Because it doesn't... It, it means that you will deal less damage to, directly to the enemy than if you buy more units and have them all survive. Arc Lights here. Leveling up already here. Level 2 here. Brawlers this side. This, this time surviving on the side of Capinguin. And these marksmen, obviously not great against small single targets. Completely overwhelmed here. By these crawlers. Crawler battles absolutely important here. If either side has crawlers breaking through to the enemy marksmen, this they the other side is in big big trouble. As they just are terrible at dealing with them. 
Uh, we see some sledgehammers here now being added for Tangdeal as well. So lineups pretty similar. Really similar. Uh, only difference is that we have Mustangs versus Arc Lights. Outside of that, both sides have sledgehammers, both sides have marksmen, both sides have crawlers. And we see some more amplifying core here. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, more units get added here. Each round, the players get 200 extra points uh, to use. At the first round, they get 400, then 600, and then 800. So escalating the battle further and further. And yeah, amplifying core here on both sides. Pretty important. 75% more damage, 75% more hit points on these units, making these sledgehammers a lot stronger. But having it on a level 2 unit obviously makes it a lot stronger than having it on a level one unit and these two sledgehammer lines here these two sledgehammers should survive quite a bit you know uh, marksman doing 2400 damage per hit these guys having 11,000 hit points mean that you need five shots of one of these marksmen to kill one of these sledgehammers which is fantastic uh, for pika finger in here having one of the mustangs here in the rear yeah as i explained earlier these mustangs in the rear are safety devices. They are great against small little crawler flanks or something like that, or wasp flanks. They are great against any of the 50-point call-ins outside of the rhino one, maybe, but they're good against the card where you can spawn wasps, where you can spawn crawlers in the rear. So having them there is nice, and with their speed, they're still quite fast on the front line. You don't want to have your Mustangs the, being the front anyways. So adding Mustangs there in the rear, pretty classic move. Mustangs also pretty versatile, like they can deal with a lot of unit types. Okayish. Uh, so adding them is really is a good safety call. Both sides doing it. Uh, yeah, and as I said, the sledgehammers here in the middle ruling the game here for Pika Pingo in this round. And as units level up only if they kill stuff, and these sledgehammers don't kill these sledgehammers here. The ones of Tangil just not gonna level up here, and that is a massive issue. Dawnquall is now coming in. Sledgehammer is here on the side of Pink Pika Pingu will continue to level. They don't level super quickly. As they need quite a bit of XP to level up. Mm. And yeah, we have a good amount of Mustangs here on each flank. But let's see what Pika Pingu can do here. And if this will work out. Well, Stormcall is on both sides. Basic, pretty basic setups here as well. Let's see if anyone goes for missile interceptors as a counter. Um, this allows Mustangs to be anti-rocket uh, or anti-missile units and use their mini guns to stop missiles out of, outside of the or rockets out of sort of the rocket launchers. Like they shoot down the stormcaller rockets before they hit the, the ground, and that can be quite interesting as an option to limit the enemy stormcallers. But it gets less efficient the longer they use it. So you still need to de deal with the storm calls eventually, else otherwise the missile the, the missiles will start getting through. And yeah, I haven't seen it today at all yet, I believe, which is interesting because on in my in my previous experiences I saw it quite a bit, even on high level. Mm. So let's see if any of these two players will use it this time around, as there are storm calls on both sides, there are mustangs on both sides. So absolutely could happen. Whilst we see the Stormcaller hitting the shield over here. Stormcaller is from the other side trying to get some damage in. Not quite doing it. More damage flying to the north. Good hits here on the Mustangs. Mustangs getting eliminated. That was an amazing Stormcaller salvo. The shield here paying off big time as well. Keeping the Mustangs and the Seed Sledgehammers of Tangdeal alive here. And with that, even the level 2 tanks in the middle won't really be the savior here for uh, for Pika uh, Pinguin. So Pika Pinguin will have to find a new solution for the flanks. The flank fights here going way better for Tang Deal. This shield here paying off major dividends. And that is good damage here for Tang Deal. Equalizing the score I believe. Yeah. Slightly ahead but obviously basically same hit points. Um, less than a one unit difference. And here, like, photon emission wins your turn, 
Barrier can be nice here against Stormcallers, I guess. I guess barrier or nothing here. Mass product uh, fortresses always a bit risky, and Fangs won't really help in this matchup at all. So, yeah, I believe it's barrier or nothing. Nice photon emission doesn't hold long enough. Both sides having pretty slow combos that hit each other relatively late. And yeah, Pika Penguin always taking a while. Takes the barrier in the end as well, though. And immediately immediately use it here on Tangdiel's side, using it for Vulcan. Big question is, what will Pika Penguin do with it? Using it for Fortress, maybe? Um, Fortress can do pretty well against the Sledgehammers, can do well against the Vulcans, and you have Arc Lights and Co. for the Crawlers. So, I would like to see a Vul uh, Fortress here. And that is what we see. Nice. Damn. On the wrong side, sadly. Obviously, in front of the Vulcan, it would be way better. Uh, nice. Correct with the prediction there. Yeah, more units being set up. And both sides are ready. We can continue the fight. Marksman here can level up. And nice shield up here. Will help against level 1 Vulcan for quite a while. Let's down here. Shield will fall somewhat soon. Barriers being hit here. Level 3 Marksman obviously doing quite good damage against the one in the north. Does fall uh, on the side of Capping Green first though. Fortress now hitting the enemy center units here. Uh, Marksman on target on the Fortress though. Fortress already going down. Marksman still busy trying to deal with the Vulcan up here. Haven't quite done it, but the south looks better for Pika Penguin this time. Thanks to the strong sledgehammers in the middle. Oh, the south was a bit short. North. Ah, the arc lights most li likely... Uh, no, the Stormcall is most likely going to kill the Marksman before... Or is it Equilibrium? No, not quite. But the south was won by Pika. Yeah, the fortress here doing a fantastic job. Vulcan survives a bit too long for my liking. Um, I feel like Elite Marksman there could be a good upgrade here now for Pika Penguin to really get the damage out. Uh, to first of all kill the barrier a lot quicker. You know, it's that upgrade that you can buy here on the Elite Marksman. Especially as they go level up here now again. Ooh, Nano Repair could be highly interesting on the fortress. I know you... We can't put it on the fortress. But a second fortress with that in the north could be interesting as well. Mm. Especially if you give it barrier. And then you have a barrier fortress in the north. But yeah, melting point is too big. Big issue there in that regard. It's orbital bombardment for both sides. Good amount of batteries. And it's melting points on both sides as well. Ooh. Ooh. Melting point for the north. You need a barrier here. Pika. 500 points still remaining, so absolutely can't afford it. Would like to see that marksman here level up. Both of these marksmen. To really kill that 60,000 hit point barrier a bit quicker. It is around this Vulcan, and then the Vulcan as well. Yeah, barrier here. Absolutely key. Absolutely key. Well, I guess the melting point will do it anyways, but... Um, yeah, sound them melting point. Good against the fortress. Or might arrive a bit late. Let's see. And yeah, here we go. Vulcan moving around. Melting point. Should be able to deal with this. Alright, light. Coming up. It's going around. As a lot of crawlers come up. Vulcan going down up north. Melting points. Doing a good job. Oh, fortress down here as well. As the sledgehammers fight heavily in the center. Oh boy. Yeah, melting points on both sides still alive, doing a good amount of damage. 
Sledgehammers, you finally leveled up the ones with the amplifying core on the side. Yeah, they, they took a long while as they just didn't deal any damage. They killed really little and they even didn't deal that much damage in general. Like by now, I mean, 70,000 damage is not that little, but yeah, they just were not involved in many kills. Finally, they can level up. Don't know if you even want to level up them at, the, at this point, though. As the melting point here should carry Pika Penguin to victory in this round. And it starts to become a bit scary here for Tang, uh, Tang Deal then. As this will be like 900 damage. Or 800 damage at least. And that means, yeah, Tang Deal absolutely in danger of getting one-shotted here now. Special, the speed specialist. The other side. Also speed or ranged? That's the big question. Like these two are the options. This one is obviously 200 points more expensive. So, like speed is easier to go for. It allows you to get into range as well. And if the enemy has speed, then the range is actually weaker because it means that your range advantage will be of less importance. Ooh, what? I didn't expect that. What unit even would you put that? On the melting point, okay. Okay. Interesting choice. Mm -hmm. Fortress moving around in the south. Missiles coming in on both sides here to try to deal with enemy crawlers. Sledgehammer is level 3 here. For sure quite strong now. Stormcall is leveled up. Mm -hmm. No missile to deal with these crawlers though. And these will be... Keeping the melting point occupied for at least a couple of seconds, which might allow this melting point to kill this melting point. So we have another melting point in the south. And yeah, here there's a lot about who locks on first. Another rapid resupply. Range on the melting points. That obviously makes it easier to lock first on, but it's also mirroring on both sides. So yeah, this is going to be insane. I'm not sure who will win here, but let's just watch the carnage as melting points here start to spawn some crawlers in. Um, yeah, now we'll deal with the shield. Uh, but then there's a lot of other units in front of this still, whilst there's not that many units in front of this melting point. To be precise, none, no units at all. And this melting point now gets the kill here for Tang Deal. Whilst the southern one is low, got hit by the fortress quite hard, but it didn't quite go down. Oh, and Stormcall is also not quite killing it. And the next lock on here for another melting point. And this is really close to fatal here as well. As there's still a lot of units around here. I'm not sure if this is actually fatal or if it's just close to fatal. But Pika Penguin going really low. Yeah, going down to 233 hit points here. So the next round most likely is going to be it. Giant Hunter for Tongue Deal. What? What? Okay. Like, this will be the final round, no? Believing that there will be a round after this one? Spending 100 points onto the Giant Hunter? When the maximum you get out of it is like 50 points extra in the next round? Wild choice by Tangdil. I don't think that makes sense. Like, I think that was a misplay here. Like, it's either Senior Defense Specialist or Photon Emission. Uh, senior Defense Specialist is what's chosen here by Tang Deal, I, uh, by Pika. I would have even gone for the Photon Mission, I believe. Mm, two Vulcans. Okay. Okay. What? Wild, wild choice. Crawlers coming in. They will die quickly against the Vulcan. Um, yeah. I mean, if the round is not the final round, and then... You kill all five giants, and then there's a round afterwards, the giant killer hunter will have paid off by 550 points. But even that is not that massive. Uh, so I I believe Photon Emission here would be way better. Making sure that it is the final round if you win. Mm. And yeah, melting point here with parasitic ammo, quite interesting. I mean, if it kills an enemy melting point, it spawns quite a lot of crawlers. But obviously, first of all, you have to kill any enemy there. And the melting points here on the side of Tangdil are now level 2. Whilst the ones on the other side still both level 1. Fortress still level 1 as well. No, and that is an issue. Mm. As the shield up here drops way faster. 
killed over here. Going down now. Ooh, that was a quick kill, though. Yes. Melting point. Starts to spawn in units. Vulcans here doing a good amount of work. But the south is critical here now. The south is not looking good whatsoever here. For Pinka Penguin. I hear this might be it. Okay, this melting point hitting this melting point is big right now. That will spawn in a good couple of crawlers. Which really might change the outcome of this. The amount of crawlers spawned here is quite important. But no, it won't change the outcome. Like, yes, this turret will fall, but this melting point already locked on over here. There's not enough stuff around here anymore. And th these crawlers are nice and all, but they're not gonna win you the round. And winning the round is what was necessary here for Pika Bingo in, in this first game. So yeah, really close fight. But in the end, victory for Tang Deal in game one. The favorite is getting through in game one here. But Pika Penguin for sure is showing that they have what it takes to give Tang Deal a hard fight. Let's see if they have what it takes to win a map against Tang Deal in game number two. So, yep. Yeah, really quick break. And then we will go on with game number two. And, yep. Yeah, we are into game two here. Tang Deal versus Pika Penguin. As we have Steel Bolts. We have Fangs. We have Aerial Specialist. Uh... Yeah, interesting setup here. Rhino, Marksman, Mustang. Sounds like an absolutely fantastic standard to go for. I would love to see a Heavy Armor Specialist here in the finals. Come on. P ah, okay. Pika Penguin. Once more going with cost efficiency. Uh, cost control specialist. That did misfire in the semifinals, though. Where it was the only game that Pika Penguin lost before the finals. Now it's 1 0 for deal here and pika penguin does not have any room for error here as if tang deal wins that tang deal wins the tournament and yeah tang deal here on match point pika penguin slightly more hit points and then tang deal here rhinos obviously from round three onward will be quite devastating uh, question is what you get here as pika penguin in prospect of that it's Quite a classic standard uh, setup here. Pika Penguin. Um, on the... Wait. What? Where do the... Yeah. No. Tang deal with Marksman. Yeah. Pika Penguin here on the right side with the Phoenixes. In red. Yeah. I turned the map the wrong way around. Mustangs coming up. Crawlers coming up. Dark Lights will hit them. So let's freaking go. Mustangs will be hurt. We will hit the Mustangs. Uh, Phoenix is getting one kill here at least, but will be victory for Tang Deal, which is obviously not great. <laughs> like losing the first round already, as Pika Penguin here, is quite painful. Mm. At least. Kills one of the enemy marksmen here, so only takes 100 damage. But yeah, round 3 is where Hangdil gets his bonus. So Pika Penguin losing earlier here, that's that's trouble. Let's uh, see what they choose. Let's uh, see what Pika Penguin is choosing over here. Going in with some wasps. Where did they go? Ooh! Tangdil is feeling... Okay, yeah, it's cheaper wasps. It's wasp mass production here. On the other side, no choice choosing uh, uh, chosen just yet. Improved steel balls, mass production, uh, phoenixes, and mass produced wasps. Interesting choices here. Interesting choices for sure. As Tangdil can choose some nice stuff here as well. Yeah, the mass produced wasps for the flank. Ooh, I'm liking it. Wonder if they will just resell them next turn. Or if this is a long-term plan. I don't believe it's a long-term plan. I feel like that's just a... Yeah, I want to test you and if necessary just use field recovery. 100 point, 150 points invested into wasps here, not massive. They can pay off quite bigly, big here, especially as a, if you win the first two rounds and then get the rhino. Quite big. You can, if the enemy doesn't react at all, add a rhino potentially up here as well to add some extra havoc. 
So, yeah, a lot of options here for Pika Pinguin and Tongue Deal. A lot, a lot of options. As we have some marksmen here coming up as well. Stormcallers being around. Marksmen coming up. Wasp moving forward. Absolutely has the potential of devastation here against the research facility. As we see Stormcallers here on the side. Pick a penguin at it. Not doing badly, but though these missiles here, ah, they were a bit wasted. It was a pretty bad salvo from both Stormcallers there, and that should end in devastation here. Yeah, they killed off a couple more units in the center, but the wasps here now coming in from the flank. Not sure if the wasps now deal 100 or 200 damage. No, they deal 100 damage now. Okay. Changed that as well with the cost. Wasn't quite sure about that. Or? What do they? No, they still deal 200 damage, right? It's 17 per wasp. You know, they still deal 200 damage, but they only cost you 100. So that's big. They actually deal 200 damage, yeah. Well, 17 per wasp, and that's more than <laughs> uh, 5 wasps. So, yeah, damn. That is something to keep in mind there as well. Marksman coming around. Okay, yeah, wasps using jump drive, moving into a rear. Moving away from the Mustangs. As we have the Rhino now on the battlefield. Mustangs with damage upgrade. Not doing much against the Rhino, though. In general, I'm not sure what does deal much against the Rhino here. Yeah, we have move orders here now to keep the Stormcallers busy. Yeah, Phoenix is coming around. So, yeah, like the Phoenixes are the only thing that can deal somewhat decently with the Rhino here, but it's level 2 Rhino versus only level 1 Phoenixes. So even then, it's still a lot of shots. Like, it's... It's 5,000 shots per salvo from both of these, so it's still like 9 salvos, 8 salvos to kill a Rhino. It's a lot. <laughs> and this Rhino will be a problem. With the current setup of Pika Pinguin here. Like, no steel bolts, no level 2 stuff in general. Like, that's why this level, this Rhino Specialist is so scary. Uh, yeah, I like the more Phoenixes. As I said, like, Phoenixes need to level up. Crawlers here. Pretty frustrating. Storm callers. Shoot around. Both sides hitting each other here. Mustangs with the extra 100% damage win obviously the Mustang fights here. And will also do good against the Wasps. Oh, can they kill it before? No! Devastation! Oh, so close! But if the run like if the run would have gotten killed before hitting the facility there, it would have been a lot better for Pika Penguin. Like that might might have still even been a win, but that in those nine seconds now afterwards, complete devastation did hit the field. Oh my goodness! Oh, so close. Also, obviously, would have meant that with the kill, the Phoenixes might have leveled up or would have leveled up for sure, and then this round here would be less problematic as well. But it. Now it means that the Phoenixes didn't get any XP because the Rhino didn't die. Plus, Pika Penguin took way more damage here. And this is a big, big problem now. Oh, this missile here, pretty strong as well. What do you do here now? Do you do missiles as well? Yeah, I guess you want to hit one of the enemy Mustangs here too. Mm, the one with the damage up north. Yeah, that's, that's what you want to hit here. Should do well. But... Ow! Surprise it goes on this one. I'm not sure if it will hit the Phoenix. I guess it will. Mm. And then the Phoenix is go down as well. Yeah. Rhino will do the same move again. Steel bolts being added. To the rear. Will they arrive in time then? If you add them this far back? I would have add them a bit further forward. They would... I'm not sure if they will arrive on time to deal enough damage to the Rhino. The bolt's good against the Seed Ledgehammers here as well. And if, especially if they level up once or twice. And then maybe get an ability. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I like this more. Exactly. 
missiles on both sides will be devastating. Oh, oops, what's running into it? Yeah, hits the phoenixes as well. The rhino is coming in. Uh, and the rhino won't be hit by the steel bolts. And there is no phoenix in the south, so this will be another round victory, another victory here for Tank Deal, and it will be pretty hefty damage once more, most likely. And so yeah, these nine seconds of devastation here now are gonna be brutal once more. No damage output whatsoever on the side of Pika Penguin, whilst everything here gets just massacred. At least kills one more marksman here. I'll kill another sledgehammer or two. So at least reduces damage a bit, but yeah, this, the Rhino is a massive, massive issue. Pika Penguin absolutely not ready for this Rhino. Rhino at least not leveling up to level 3, it doesn't kill as much. And with the reduction of the turrets in hit points, it's quite in, in, interesting. Top supply specialist here. In round 5, kind of a must take, but you might want to cut this corner here as Pika Penguin. So then you really have to find a late game solution for this problem, otherwise it just scales way too hard. Mm, Penguin says, "Okay, I'm trying to skip. Uh, I'm trying to skip this here. Obviously, gives a major advantage this round, but from next round and the rounds onward, Tang Deal will have the late game. Tang Deal absolutely can say like, yeah, test me. If you don't go for top supply specialist, like your late game will be.'" Way worse than mine. The 150 extra points are really big. And ooh, ooh, Pika Penguin going wild here as well. I love it. I would have loved it with the crawlers here even more. Like I think the crawler spawn next to it is, or ah, well, crawler spawn hasn't been chosen yet. I always think the game starts when it comes up. But yeah, yeah, yeah. the crawler spawn needs to get next to this Vulcan so that the marksmen are ready, uh, busy. Hmm. Well, I fear the marksman will shoot at the Vulcan immediately, though. For the crawler, sp the first crawler spawns out, and it doesn't really help. I'm not quite certain. We're gonna see. We're gonna see how it works. But yeah, I like the idea behind this Vulcan. You need to throw a curveball here. More crawlers. Okay. Yeah, I like the idea. Hmm. Uh, yeah, Vulcan not spawning in fully here. Doesn't doesn't kill the full range of the Mustang, such is the problem. Oh, at least, okay, at least this time around the Steel Balls do their job. Which is big. Okay, this is the range upgrade on the Steel Balls. I can't quite click the Steel Balls there. Um, arc lights on both lights still, uh, Storm Polar still firing on both sides. And in the end, it's still not enough here, though, for Pika Penguin. And that is really terrible now. <laughs> it's like, the enemy buys top supply specialists and you're still not able to beat them. You know it's looking bleak. For the future. Um, I would expect Tang Deal to just say, yeah, okay, I'm already winning. Let's make sure I'm winning in the late game even harder. Okay, no. Shields? Well, that's decent as well. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, that's the issue with these flanks. Especially if you don't level up. Like, if the Vulcan would have leveled up here now, then the flank starts to become strong, but it, because it died too quickly, I think the crawlers would have had to be in front of it directly, directly so that the sniper wouldn't have started firing on it immediately, neither the Mustangs. Um, but... Yeah, no. This is over. It was a bit of a desperation move, it was a bit of a gamble, but I feared... This is not gonna... Like, this flank is dead. And the question is, can you afford resell? Like, selling away the Vulcan. Because, yeah, then you have 400 points, but you can't buy another strong unit immediately. Or, like, not in the quantity, at least. But I feel like you need to resell this. Like, immediately, basically. Not just next turn, but... I feel like... Selling it now, expecting the enemy to go use melting points, and then going for like major phoenix upgrades is the way to go. Instead, we have rhinos here versus rhinos. Fancy. Okay. 
Yeah, crawlers trying to confuse the enemy storm crawlers. Basic, pretty classic here as well. Oh, and uh, because I clicked the wrong thing because my stream deck is not working today. I believe I would have to restart the stream completely to make it work. Bit of a shame. Yeah, Rhino going down. Wasps in the skies. Let's see how it goes here. Good hits. Ooh. Sledgehammer's getting bullied here. Uh -huh. About the southern the southern position here. Getting breaking through. Might be it. It's a lot of damage for sure. Ah. Uh, still some crawlers getting through. This is a lot of damage. This is nearly it here for Pika Penguin and the supply specialist is just tweaking the the numbers way too heavily in favor of Tangil in my eyes. For this to work out now. Like n you needed to do something with these units here, I believe. Like leveling up the Phoenixes and then going for Phoenix heavy strategy, maybe. To try to deal with this all. But then even the crawlers are an issue still. Like there's even still not mass enough mass destruction against the crawlers. Don't think the Rhino did much last turn. Don't think the Rhino in the North will do much this turn. Like, I still think the best way is for Field Recovery to take away the Vulcan and then go for these guys, as I said. Kinda need to do something here and this is this is not working. Pika Penguin needs to do a gamble and even then I'm fearful of this working out. Um, hey, Total Reds War. Thanks for the follow. Much appreciated. Yes, yeah. This is the field recovery. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Important. Super important. 1,700 points. 30 seconds remaining. These steel bolts leveling up. By the way, there's no chance that Pika Penguin is uh, listening to us. This is... We are four minutes behind. Or, or like... The stream output is four minutes behind. I, like I'm one minute thirty behind, and then another two minutes until it goes to you, plus an extra delay and so on. So, like a about four minutes behind. But yeah, right choice in that regard. Going for melting points can work. Would have gone for phoenixes. Uh, melting points are an idea worth trying here in my eyes as well. Uh, they will do well against the steel bolts. Uh, they don't help much against the wasps, but you have some mustangs here, so they should do it somewhat. Steel balls with extra range. Also spawn a couple extra crawlers when they die. But it's still too much. Yeah, this is not working out. Tangdil will win the first SL tournament. As Yeah, this is it. Tangdil here. Getting the W against Pika Penguin. And... Yep, the favorite getting through here. World rank number t 11 or 10. Beating Ping Pika Penguin here. Really, really strong game uh, from both players. And yeah, a lovely first tournament here. And I will try to get uh, Tangdil in for uh interview. Hey, congratulations on the victory. Uh, hey, thank you. Yeah. Hope you had a great, fun time. Just like everybody. Yeah, it was very fun. <laughs> Had a little bit of waiting in between, but uh, it was totally fine. And yeah, you're back on Division Rank 1 with that tournament as well. I see. Getting yourself a good Division Rank 1. In, on the Division Leaderboard. Back to oh, 6,400 yeah. combat power. So, congratulations to not just the victory, but also being Rank 1 in Germany at least. Again. <laughs> Hopefully you can get those Chinese players eventually as well. And hey, Pika Pingarin, thanks for the wait. Hey, I'm not sure what's up with the Chinese players. Like a week ago or something, they started going all out. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, since when are you playing Mechabellum, by the way? Like, let's. Um, well, since a, two weeks before release, I guess. In the in the yeah. um, early access. Uh, no, what was it before? The demo. Oh, test server, yeah, right. Test server. How did you find it? 
What what was your way into it? Did you watch Maxim or? Um, I actually saw a GameStar article on it. Ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Germany, it's it's insane how big it is in Germany, especially compared to the rest of the world. Obviously, I'm also sitting in Germany here, uh, just doing. Yeah, it it's kind of crazy. But kind of funny. I guess they just got more press coverage or something, and yeah, it kind of boomed. Yeah. I think they need to be do a bit more of PR in other, other uh, nations. Yeah, I hope that uh, Paradox will push that a bit more. I mean, there's there were a good couple of YouTube videos by some bigger streamers uh, by some bigger YouTubers as well, but sadly not yeah. that many streamers I believe involved into it. Hopefully that yeah. will change in the future. And yeah, it was really strong games. And yeah, what you always started with a uh, similar setup though like do you think the game could at the moment is kind of figured out from the basic setup like with the mustangs in the rear or is that just like because the enemy did kind of the same thing all the time as well i'm not sure about being it being figured out it's just kind of my play style i like to play the defensive and i mean mustangs in the flanks just kind of makes sense i think yeah and just general as well because you can kind of defend you against most flanks yeah, um exactly like but there there are also a lot of top players that are like to play aggressive or kind of you know play play a lot different for example today i just lost a game to a player that played like six hackers or something and with a ton of upgrades so there are a lot of play ways to play this yeah uh, so that's that's great to hear um what do you think was your leg up in the finals and the semifinals? Like, why do you think the enemy compositions didn't quite work out as well as yours? Any any insight um, on that? Or I'm not. I think I just played it a bit more uh, solid. I guess yeah. the, the builds were a bit cleaner. I guess yeah. Yeah, I think we we both just played kind of similar with both defensive setups and um, not a lot of surprises and then I kind of got a, I don't know, maybe a leg up with the with the Wasp in the second game which kind of forced him to go for Mustangs as well so I kind of uh, could predict what he was going to do and apart from that, I don't know, I think I just played a bit more solid, had maybe a bit more luck in, in some cases yeah yeah, okay but yeah, it, absolute congratulations. It was absolute joy to watch you through all, all rounds. I think we caught all but one round of your games from the round of 30 <laughs> to the finals. And uh, yeah, if you have anything that you would change on the tournament format or the game in general, uh, what would it be at the moment? Like once for the tournament format, one for the game in general. Um... About the tournament, is, uh, I'm not not entirely sure. I mean, I thought it was a bit confusing that you couldn't um, that you didn't get any notification after joining up. Yeah. And apart from that, I mean, I had to wait a bit, but I guess that's uh, there. There are up and downsides to that because then you can cast all games. Yeah. So I'm not really sure that that's a bad thing in general. Yeah, we just uh, want to make sure that all the rounds are starting at the same time and so on. And then with the finals, obviously, like casting both the finals and uh, both the semifinals was kind of key as well. And yeah, yeah, the games are quite short. That's why I went for it that way. I believe if you have like another caster, like you could do the semifinals parallel and then you just go directly to the finals. But as I sadly, all the casters that I asked for uh, sadly had all other uh, things happening today. Hopefully that changes next time. Maybe, yeah. Maybe next time it will be out better. But uh, it was it was all, all fine, really. The, the tournament went fine, I think, and I never really had trouble with uh, finding people or whatever. Yeah. So that went rather well. And for the game in general, I'm honestly not quite sure what I would change because it's. I'm not sure that the meta is figured out or anything. So I feel like it's already it's also being tweaked quite a bit the whole time. Yeah. Um, with the Rhino nerfs a while ago, and now Rhino buff a bit. Yeah, I think I think it's speed in general in a good spot. Yeah, that's that's great to hear. That's what I wanted to hear. I hope that the quality of life improvements that they push out over the next couple of weeks will add to the feeling as well, and maybe get a couple more yeah. casuals in playing the game as well. Yeah, that would be great. 
Yeah. I'm also looking forward to the new units, although that will take some time to get out. <laughs> yeah, the, the the War Factory, I have no idea what they will do with that thing. What do you think? Like, it sounds like it will just spawn units, but the question is how will that work, right? Like, what will it spawn? Yeah, yeah I'm also not quite sure how it will work. I mean, I think it was uh, 800 cost units, so it must be really, really strong. Yeah. Maybe it will also have like a like a kind of maybe maybe a weapon on it, and then you can kind of set it to produce a certain other base unit or something like yeah, that. Like what I could see is that it like has upgrades for free, but you can only choose like one or two, and then it produces and like the upgrades are you choose which kind of units it produces. Like okay, that would be my idea right now, but like that's just <laughs> complete speculation. <laughs> so might be interesting. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, thank once more thanks for joining the tournaments. Thanks for joining for the interview as well and congratulations. And yeah, 